In today's video, we'll talk about what to do when something goes wrong. Let's say you're somewhere in your application and you're trying to fetch some resource, but it doesn't exist. What should you be doing here? Should you throw an exception? Should you use the result pattern? Does it depend on what type of application you're building? Today's video is all about that. So let's jump right in. Subscribe, smash the like button, do it. Generally speaking, there are two schools of thought when it comes to flow control. One school of thought and one approach is to throw exceptions. And the other one is to use something like the result pattern. Oversimplifying what these approaches are about. So throwing exceptions says when something goes wrong, then you throw an exception, you break the flow, and you go directly to somewhere else in the application where you know to take this exception that was thrown and convert it to the right error that the client should get. This can be, for example, throwing a new not found exception. This is the first approach, extremely common. This is what's used in most production applications today. Something goes wrong, you throw some exception, you know how to handle it elsewhere and return the correct error to the client. Another approach that's becoming more and more common with time is using the result pattern. The result pattern says that in the various methods that we have throughout our application, we won't simply try to execute the good flow. And if something goes wrong, we'll throw an exception. But instead, methods can go down a few routes, either the route of the good flow or the route of something went wrong and some error occurred. So over here, for example, in this method, in the good flow, then we don't do anything. We simply create the review and we return a task. But using the result pattern approach, then over here, we won't do this, but we'll return either nothing or an error or the list of errors of what went wrong. This means that each layer in our application needs to know how to handle these errors. For example, the controller is the one that calls the review service. This will now return a response that we'll need to see if it's the good flow. Then great, return the response to the client. If an error occurred, then over here, we want to return some error response to the client. The NuGet package that I use for this approach is called error or, and I'm one of the people working on this package. So that's just a small disclaimer. What error or gives you is the possibility to say, this method will return either an error or in our case, success. If we're returning an object, so let's say in the list async method, then this will return error or the list of reviews. And then the layer calling this layer will need to know how to handle both of the cases because they no longer simply have the list of reviews, but they have either the error or the list of reviews. Now, if you're just working on a PLC, you're trying to build a small to medium application but you want to get up and running as quickly as possible, then I would recommend for you to use the exceptions approach. So again, throwing an exception when something goes wrong and knowing how to convert that to the right error response back to the client. On the other hand, if you know your application will grow and you're going to have a lot of complex logic in your application, you may have various scenarios in which things can fail. In that case, I would 100% recommend for you to use the result pattern approach because the more complex the application gets, the more complex the error handling flow becomes and throwing exceptions just isn't scalable in that case. In this specific application that I'm working on, this is a small to medium application that is mostly CRUD. It won't have too complex logic. And likewise for the error handling, we don't expect there to be many layers calling other layers and the logic becoming very complex and thus the error handling becoming complex, then we will simply use exceptions for flow control. For this, what I want us to do is to create a new folder and call this errors. Inside the errors folder, we'll create what we're going to refer to as the service exception. The service exception will be an exception that we'll throw when something goes wrong with the details that we want to return to the client. In our case, what we want to do is to return the status code and some error message. So let's define over here a constructor that gets the status code and the error message. And let's simply call this message. And this, we want this to be an exception. That way we have the stack trace and the other properties that come with the exception. Let's create properties for the status code and the message so we can extract them later. Now, because the message property is hiding the message property in the base exception, let's update the name of this to be error message. Now that we have this, then back here where we're throwing an exception, we can say 
throw new service exception. And over here, we need to pass it the status code and the error message. But because we're going to have various not found exceptions, then instead what I want us to actually do is to create another class that is called the not found exception. The not found exception will inherit from the service exception. And what it'll do is it won't need the status code because this, we want this to be four four. So what we'll do is we'll pass it over here. We'll hard code that this returns status codes dot 404 and the message that we received. Once we have this, then now we can throw a new not found exception and we only need to specify the error message. And I'm sure you can see how this would scale. So when we need other exceptions, then we'll create other exceptions that will have the status code and the message. If there are specific domain errors that we expect, then we may decide to create specific exceptions for that. So just filling in these examples, then over here again, when we don't have a product, then we want to return the exact same thing. So product not found and specify the product ID. And similarly over here where we're listing, then if the product doesn't exist, then again, we want to return product not found. Now, if we make a create review request without having a product, which means that, that we'll throw the exception because the product ID specified over here won't be found, then what do you think will be the response? So we make the request and we get 500, not 404. If you're wondering how this can be because we just literally wrote status codes dot 404, then this is the response because looking at our global error handling, the way we set it up, then we can see that we don't have any logic that is specific to our service exceptions that we know may be thrown. What we want to do is to add over here our custom logic. What we can do is as follows. We can say return, and then we can take the exception that was thrown. We can switch on it, and we can say that if this is a service exception, then what we want to do, let's say over here, service exception, then we want to return results.problem. We want the status code to be the service exception dot status code, and we want the detail to be the service exception dot error message. And alongside this, we also want the base case in which something went wrong. Let's return over here results dot problem, which will simply be 500. With this small update, then now when we create a review and the product doesn't exist, then we get 404 not found with the corresponding error message where the product was not found. This is true for this, but it's also true for the get review and for the list reviews because we added that logic there as well, then this is the response here as well. So recapping on all the changes that we did, what we said is that we'll use exceptions for flow control when the application is small to medium, when the logic that the application has isn't too complex, meaning it's just a simple CRUD application. You don't have many layers that call one another and each one of these can fail. If your application is somewhat shallow or if the application is pretty small, then I would recommend for you to use exceptions for flow control. What this means is that when something goes wrong, then to break the flow that you're currently at and go directly to where you're mapping that error to the client, we're throwing an exception, which you can look at it simply go to where we're going over here to the global error handling spot. Then we're throwing some unique exception that we'll later know how to map. In this case, we're throwing the not found exception, which is unique for the error response of not found. This is caught in our global error handling. And all we're doing is we're taking the exception. We're saying that if it's a service exception, then we're taking the status code and the detail, populating the re error response with that and returning it to the client. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something new. If you did, smash the like button and I'll see you in the next one.